Now let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together, and uh, thank you for it being the Sabbath. I think everybody's ready. Father, we, uh, we will uh, take this time as, as commanded to rest and uh, realize that you're in control of things. It's not us. We can forget about our work and other cares that we have and just take rest and comfort and fellowship with one another. We pray that your, your breath, your spirit lead us as we study your word this evening. This we pray as your humble servants. Amen. Amen. <coughs> We're on Numbers, chapter 31. <clears throat> the first two verses. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take full vengeance for the sons of Israel on the Midianites. Afterward, you will be gathered to your people. Um, it's time to carry out this command of Numbers 25, verses 16 through 18. And we read there, Verse 16, And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Be hostile to the Midianites and strike them, for they've been hostile to you with their tricks, with which they've deceived you in the affair of Peor, in the affair of Cosby, the daughter of the leader of Midian, their sister who was slain on the day of the plague because of Peor. Well, going to be hostile to the Midianites now. We're going to get back at them. Um, and if you caught that in the end of that second verse... Afterward, you'll be gathered to your people. You're yeah, you're going to die. After, after this, that's, then we're, you're done. So uh, that's how it is. Now, the Midianites, they were sons of Abraham and Keturah. That's in Genesis 25, the first four verses, so we can see where they came from. Now, Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimran and Jokshan, <laughs> And Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua. And Jokshan became the father of Sheba and Dedan. And, and Sheba and Dedan, that's really Arabia now. That's, uh, they're they're the, uh, the origins of that. And the sons of Dedan were Asherim and Latushim and uh, Luimim. And the sons of Midian were Epha, Epher, Hanak, and Abida and Elda. And all these were the sons of Keturah. Now, Keturah, she was a concubine of Abraham's. Abraham, uh, he, took on a, he took another wife, um, and we don't know a whole lot about her, except that she bore some children. And a lot of people think that she's Hagar that came back after the death of Sarah, but I don't think that's the case. <clears throat> Numbers 31, verses 3 through 5. And Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm men from among you for the war, that they may go against Midian to execute Yahweh's vengeance on Midian. A thousand from each tribe of all the tribes of Israel you shall send to the war. So there were furnished from the thousands of Israel, a thousand from each tribe, 12,000 armed for war. Okay, they're going to send only 12,000 people, men, to go against the Midianites. Uh, we're told in verse 3, they're taking vengeance, but they're not taking vengeance for themselves. They're taking vengeance for Elohim, it says in verse 3. <clears throat> the Midianites involved Israel in idolatry and adultery, and Elohim takes that very seriously. Elohim, he doesn't want to take vengeance here with fire or a flood or earthquake in, in this instance. He wants to use as the instrument of his wrath a very small portion of his people. And we'll talk about how many, we don't, we're not told how many Midianites there are, but we'll, we, can, we can have a pretty good guess. We'll get to that. <clears throat> Verse 6, And Moses sent them a thousand from each tribe to the war, and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war with them, and the holy vessels and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. We don't know the number of Midianites. Army, uh, we just had a 12,000-man army. That's less than 2% of the male population of Israel. Why? Why did he just send a big old army? He could have sent two people in one. He could have sent two people in one. That was the whole idea. Yeah. Uh, they want to, he wants the Midianites in Israel to realize who's going to win this war. It's not going to be the men. It's not going to be their firepower. It's not going to be their nuclear weapons or their chariots or anything like that. It's going to be Elohim that gets this victory for them. Now, the biggest fear of the Midianites was the army of Israel. 
And Elohim was going to show them what just a small fraction of that army could do. And it doesn't look like they have a leader of these 12,000 men. Now, Phineas, he, uh, he seems to be in charge of the holy instruments, probably meaning the Ark of the Covenant, the silver trumpets. But we don't have a, like a military leader. George Patton was not there. So it's, these guys are going there, and, and apparently they had their mind set on what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. Verses 7 through 9. And they made war against Midian, just as Yahweh had commanded Moses, and they killed every male. And they killed the kings of Midian along with the rest of their slain, Evi and Rechem and Zur and Hur and Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with a sword. Remember Balaam, don't you? He's that false prophet. And the sons of Israel captured the women of Midian and their little ones and all their cattle and all their flocks, flocks and all their goods they plundered. <laughs> uh, the men were killed, but the women were spared. And they got the five kings of Midian and Balaam. Verses 10 through 12, Then they burned all their cities where they lived and all their camps with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of man and of beast. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil to Moses and to Eleazar the priest and to the congregation of the sons of Israel to the camp of the plains of Moab, which are by the Jordan opposite Jericho. <clears throat> the cities were, were burned down and all the spoil that they got uh, was taken. Took everything that was owned by man and used on beast. They kept it all. Verses 13 and 14, And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the leaders of the congregation went out to meet them outside the camp. And Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the captains of the thousands and the captains of the hundreds who had come from service in the war. You know, there were uh, captains of hundreds and captains of thousands. This principle was used early in Exodus where Moses appointed men over the thousands, the hundreds, the fifties, and the tens. That's in Exodus 18, verse 21. Very interesting verse here for one particular reason. We read, Furthermore, you shall select out of all the people, able men who fear Elohim, men of truth, those who hate dishonest gain. You shall place these over them as leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. Now, according to Noah Webster, one of the country's founding fathers, this passage was used as a major principle in organizing our government. And that's how we based our levels of government, was based on this passage in Exodus 18, verse 21. The federal, over the rule, uh, federal government over rulers of the thousands, state over the rulers of the hundreds, county rulers of the fifties, and the cities, rulers of the tens. Uh, that's, the, that's the basis for our republic. And it gives, uh, it gives all the people a chance to have a voice in government. <clears throat> they, didn't, they didn't destroy everybody. Well, you didn't say kill you. You still don't take their women. Well, they did. Well, I mean, he didn't kill the men, is what you're saying? He killed the men. Oh, okay. And they, well, they kept the women and all the... the yeah. I got you. <clears throat> now... The United States government, in a lot of ways, was based upon the word of Elohim. Now, the founding fathers, they weren't really Torah observant. But here they had, they had something that they knew was going to be great. They didn't know how to do it. They knew they didn't want a monarch. They didn't want a king. They want some kind of a representative government. So uh, they looked to Scripture. And that uh, Exodus 18.21 is one place where they got it. Uh, and also the Constitution was written because Deuteronomy 17, 18 says to write down a copy of the, of the law. We read, Now it shall come about when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself a copy of this Torah on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priests. That's why the Constitution was written down. <clears throat> the basis for our three branches of government are in Isaiah 33, verse 22 where we read, Yahweh is our judge, Yahweh is our lawgiver, Yahweh is our king, he will save us. Now that was acknowledged by James Madison as the inspiration for the three branches of our government, judicial, legislative, and executive. Now isn't that fascinating? 
<clears throat> but like I said, they didn't really know what they were doing when they formed our, our country. But they thought, this is the model that's in Scripture. Let's use it as best we can. I mean, they're just starting out as a country too. And this is what he told them to do, so let's do it. <clears throat> Numbers 31, verses 15 through 18. And Moses said to them, Have you spared all the women? Behold, these caused the sons of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to trespass against Yahweh in the matter of Peor. So the plague was among the congregation of Yahweh. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known man intimately. But all the girls you have not known intimately spare for yourselves. Now, I, when I, I used to uh, do a message board, a creation science message board, and I remember uh, several people claimed that uh, Scripture uh, appointed Israel to rape the Midianite girls because they saved the ones that hadn't been with a man, and that's, that's absurd. Um, it would be a violation of Torah for them to do that. In Deuteronomy 21, starting at verse 10, we read, When you go out to battle against your enemies, and Yahweh your Elohim delivers them into your hands, and you take them away captive, and see among the captives a beautiful woman, and have a desire for her, and would take her as a wife for yourself, then you shall bring her home to your house. She'll shave her head, trim her nails. Here's the deal. If they capture a people, like we have here, we have girls here that have not known women, they're the only ones left. Uh, first of all, why did he destroy everyone else? Why the little boys? Why? They grow up. Well, they grow up is one thing. Here's the other thing. Remember all the, the sexual laws that he made the, the people, that he gave them? Like, why would you need to tell people don't have sex with animals? Why would you need to tell people that? I mean, it just, you know, incest, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the homosexuality was, was rampant. He said... All these things that the people that are in that land, they, they do them. They do all these things. Well, what happens when you have uh, incest, homosexuality, and bestiality rampant throughout a land? It's this thing called disease. Okay? Um, who are the only ones who would not be diseased? The, the girls that hadn't been touched. What about the boys? You don't know. You don't know. Well, at least they listen to their daddy and they'll do it when they get older. <laughs> right, if not practice when they're younger. I mean, it's... It, so, really, to spare the girls was merciful. And here, in this case, if you see one that you want to... If you have one, if you take one, it's for a wife. All right? And now, the women may have a handmaiden, but if you take one, it's going to be for your wife. And here's what's going to be the deal. Ooh, she looks good. I'm going to take her as a wife. Well, the first thing you got to do, you're going to shave her head, cut her, cut her uh, nails down <clears throat> in your house. Now, how attractive is she still? In verse 13, we keep going here. She shall also remove the clothes of her captivity and shall remain in your house and mourn her father and her mother a full month. After that, you may go into her and be her husband and she shall be your wife. So it's after that, it, it can't just be a looks thing. She didn't have to appeal to you. And he continues, it, it shall be if you're not pleased with her, you know, bald and without fingernails, you shall let her go. But you shall certainly not sell her for money. You shall not mistreat her because you've humbled her. And they shaved her head and stuff. So the young girls were going to be taken as domestic servants. Uh, and they're treated accordingly uh, to what the Torah says. Any questions on that before we move on? I mean, sometimes you, you, there's situations, what, there's no great answer. There's no really good answer. You know? <clears throat> and that's one of them. Verse 19, you shall, and you, camp outside the camp seven days, whoever has killed any person, whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves, you and your captives, on the third day and on the seventh day. They're to be cleansed according to Torah, the, the men, the beasts, the spoil. 
Uh, okay, what is this be cleansed on the third day and the seventh day? How does, what is that about? Does anybody remember? But why? Where did we hear about that earlier? Red heifer. The ashes of the red heifer. It's kind of made into a, a, a lye soap type thing. And that's the, to be cleansed on the third and the seventh day. <clears throat> Verse 20, you shall purify yourselves every garment and every article of leather and all the work of goat's hair and all articles of wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men of war who had gone to battle, this is the statute of Torah which Yahweh has commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead. Everything that can stand fire, you shall pass through the fire and it shall be clean. But it shall be purified with water for impurity. But whatever cannot stand the fire, you shall pass through the water. Everything's got to be purified with either fire or water. <clears throat> Verse 24, you shall wash your clothes on the seventh day and be clean. Afterward, you may enter the camp. Uh, the laws of cleanliness in scripture are rather profound and very telling as to Elohim. He's, he's not going to teach them about microbiology, but he's going to tell them what to do. And instead of, why? 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 Just do it. Okay? He knew what he was talking about. <clears throat> Verse 25. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, You and Eleazar the priest and the heads of the father's households of the congregation shall take account of the booty that was captured, both of man and of animal, and divide the booty between the warriors who went out to battle and all the congregation. And levy a tax for Yahweh from the men of war who went out to battle. One in five hundred of the persons and of the cattle and of the donkeys and of the sheep. Take it from their half and give it to Eleazar the priest as an offering to Yahweh. The division of the spoils of war was among the warriors, the Levites, the congregation, and the priests. The warriors take half the spoils. Give half of 1% to the priests. The congregation received the other uh, half, and they were to give 2% to the Levites. So that's how the splitting up was going to be. Verses 30 and 31, And from the sons of Israel's half you shall take one drawn out of every 50 of the persons of the cattle, of the donkeys, and of the sheep from all the animals, and give them to the Levites who keep charge of the tabernacle of Yahweh. And Moses and Eleazar and the priest did just as Yahweh had commanded Moses. So those who stayed home gave one out of every 50 captive persons and animals to the Levites. And it's important there, Moses and Eleazar the priest, in verse 31, did just as Yahweh had commanded Moses. Um, the obedience part, it's so important. And once again, uh, why do you want it done this way? Why do you want it done this way? And he says, uh, because I said so. You know, I've, uh, I was watching a, a Prager video the other day. It was very good. It's about dealing with your children. And it said, don't, don't reason with your children. So if people want to get down on the ground, get down on their face, and you know, squat down and get face to face, well, now look, I want you to do this because uh, mom is to make mommy happy and this and that. <clears throat> so I need you to pick up your toys on the floor. Why? Well, if you start answering the why thing, he'll start answering back with reasons. Okay? Well, I want you to pick them up because you could trip over them and then you, you would, uh, you'd hurt yourself. Oh, well, I'll make sure I step around them. <laughs> um, you, the why game can go for a long time. Uh, like us with the father, why? Well, why do you want us to clean ourselves? I feel fine. I've got a little blood all over me, but what does that matter, right? Blood carries all kinds of disease. All, we know that now. Didn't know that back then, did they? <clears throat> uh, you know what is best to tell a child when you're telling them? First of all, don't get down. He's, this guy says, don't get down, squat down, and get face to face with them. You know what you're doing? You're bowing down to the little king. Okay? Bowing down to their level. <laughs> Now he may as well wear a little crown when he's talking to you. Uh, you know what the best reason? 
And still, it's still, you all heard it when you were kids. You know what the best reason is? Because I said so. <laughs> That's the best way to deal with little kids, mm-hmm. with your children. <laughs> You're still lifting them. No, make them look up to you. Okay? Make them look up to you. This authority thing. Um, it's the same thing with, with our Heavenly Father. Because he said so. It's good reason. We can find out now that all these reasons were good. Oh, if you, like in the camp, we learned this in, in Exodus. In the camp, the latrine has to be outside the camp. Why? Why do I have to go all the way out the, outside the camp for the latrine? Well, okay, well, let me teach you about microbiology. No, because I said so. They weren't going to comprehend this. And what happened in Europe during the Dark Ages? Why were they called the Dark Ages? The sewage flowed down the streets. The plague. <clears throat> but, you know, as a Christian nation, you don't have to do what the Torah says. So the sewage flows down the streets. There you go. Just brilliant. Okay, now we're just going to go over the booty here. Now we talked about 12,000 men went to battle. Okay, let's look at what the Midianites had. Now the booty that remained from the spoil which the men of war had plundered was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and of human beings of the women who had not known man intimately, all the persons were 32,000. Half and the half the portion of those who went out to war were as follows. The number of sheep was 337,500. Yahweh's levy of the sheep was 675. The cattle were 36,000, which Yahweh's levy was 72. The donkeys were 30,500. Yahweh's levy was 61. The human beings were 16,000, from whom Yahweh's levy was 32 persons. <clears throat> Moses gave the levy, which was Yahweh's offering to Eleazar the priest, just as Yahweh commanded Moses. And as for the sons of Israel's half, which Moses separated from the men who had gone to war, now the congregation's half was 30, 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, the human beings were 16,000. And from the sons of Israel's half, Moses t- took one drawn out of every 50, both of man and of animals, gave them to the Levites, who kept charge of the tabernacle of Yahweh, just as Yahweh had commanded Moses. Then the officers who were over the thousands of the army, the captains of the thousands and the captains of the hundreds, approached Moses. And they said to Moses, your servants have taken a census of men of war who are in our charge, and no man of us is missing. <clears throat> they went in with 12,000. They came out with 12,000. Now, we don't know how many Midianites there were. We do know... Of virgin girls, there were 32,000. If we were to say that there were 300,000 fighting men then for the Midianites, yeah, yeah, be very reasonable. We're wiped out by 12,000 and not one. He could have sent two. two. You're right, you're right, Tom. So we have brought, verse 50, as an offering to Yahweh what each man found. Articles of gold, armlets and bracelets, signet rings, earrings and necklaces to make atonement for ourselves before Yahweh. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold from them, all kinds of wrought articles, and all the gold of the offering which they offered up to Yahweh. From the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds was 16,750 shekels. The men of war had taken booty, every man for himself. So Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold from the captains of thousands and of hundreds, brought it to the tent of meeting as a memorial for the sons of Israel before Yahweh. This was a very special victory. And a portion of the spoil of gold was put in the temple or the tabernacle as a reminder. Any, uh, any questions on Numbers 31? Yeah. I knew you were going to ask that. I forgot to look it up. I'm not going to call on you again tonight. Anybody else? <laughs> Mr. President? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how much a shekel is, David. <clears throat> However, let's 
sometimes they put a notation in there. But it didn't this time. Okay. 5.7 grams is a shekel? Yeah, heavy, silver, or gold, 11.4 grams, 15 shekels. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they don't do ounces, huh? No. Oh, wait, yeah. Light point two oh four ounce, heavy point four oh three ounces. Okay, so it could be a um, point three ounces then per times. 1,300. Thank you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, let's take a break for about five minutes, and we'll come back. We're going to start John, and John 1 is going to be, uh, that's going to be a lot of fun.